Hi and welcome back to Free Science Lessons. By the end of this video, you should be able to describe what's meant by facilitated diffusion. In the last video, we looked at diffusion across cell membranes. We saw that diffusion is the net or overall movement of particles from a region of higher concentration to a region of lower concentration. In other words, down the concentration gradient. And remember that diffusion is a passive process. This means that diffusion does not require any metabolic energy. In other words, the energy released by respiration. OK, now a key idea you need to understand is that not all substances diffuse across the cell membrane at the same rate. And that's because the centre of the cell membrane is hydrophobic due to the fatty acid tails of the phospholipid molecules. Hydrophobic substances, such as steroid hormones, can diffuse rapidly across the membrane. However, hydrophilic substances, such as ions and polar molecules, cannot diffuse across the membrane. Now an exception to this is water. Water molecules can diffuse across membranes, even though water molecules are polar. And that's because water molecules are very small. So as we saw, hydrophilic substances cannot diffuse across membranes. Now this is a problem for cells, as many of these substances are required for processes inside the cell. So to solve this problem, cells use a process called facilitated diffusion. In facilitated diffusion, Hydrophilic substances diffuse across the cell membrane via protein molecules. These protein molecules allow the hydrophilic substances to cross the membrane without interacting with the hydrophobic centre of the phospholipid bilayer. There are two types of protein molecules involved in facilitated diffusion, and both of these are examples of intrinsic or integral membrane proteins. In other words, they completely span the membrane from one side to the other. The first type are called carrier proteins, and I'm showing this here. Carrier proteins have a binding site for a specific chemical. When that chemical binds, it causes the tertiary structure of the carrier protein to change. This change in tertiary structure brings the chemical across the membrane, where the chemical is now released. OK, now the other type of protein involved in facilitated diffusion are protein channels, and I'm showing you that here. A protein channel is a protein with a central pore. This pore or channel is lined with hydrophilic amino acids and contains water. Hydrophilic substances can pass through the channel from one side of the membrane to the other. Now, there are a couple of important points about protein channels. Firstly, protein channels are selective for the chemical that can pass through. That means that only certain chemicals can pass through each type of protein channel. Secondly, while some types of protein channel are always open, other protein channels only open in response to a certain trigger. This could be a chemical binding to the protein channel, for example a neurotransmitter. Or it could be a change in the voltage across the membrane. And we'll see examples of these when we look at the nervous system. Now there are a couple of final points that you need to remember. Firstly, facilitated diffusion is still a type of diffusion. So even though chemicals diffuse via carrier proteins or protein channels, the chemical still moves from a region of higher concentration to a region of lower concentration. Secondly, remember that metabolic energy is not required for facilitated diffusion. OK, so hopefully now you can describe what's meant by facilitated diffusion.